Hello everybody, Tyron Cannon here and welcome back to another episode of my Cricket Captain Academy here with Northamptonshire. Sorry it's been a little while in between episodes, I've just been focusing on other content but we are back here today and today we're going to run through coach, physio and training and how to set up your team in preparation for a game. That's basically what we're going to, co what we're going to cover in today's episode. Um, so as you can see on the left hand side of the screen, there's this little coach and physio tab. You want to click on that and you can see the coaching sessions. I've got six of them, fielding sessions. You've got two physio sessions. I've also got two of those. Um, so th this screen is pretty straightforward. There's not really a lot that you can do wrong. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. There are a few things you can do wrong. So I'm basically going to explain that, that now. Um, the easiest way to improve your players is giving all of your training to the younger guys and then if a player is out of form which we'll get to later stick them in the second 11 and then bring them back up uh, form wise but we'll cover that in the back half of this episode so I'm going to focus on Marlow here today I forgot his first name Billy Marlow he's the uh, 19 year old prospect that we signed in episode one so let's have a look at his strengths and weaknesses um, you can see he's got average aggression uh, at one day level and at first class level. He's a slight leg side, leg side preference and he's also an opener in T20s, which is useful. Um, now, it really depends on what type of role you want Milo to play in your side. So, we're going to come back to this, screen, to this screen in a second. Just going to skip forward through these results and we're actually going to pick our squad for the next match. And then we need to figure out where Milo's going to play and then that will indicate what type of training we want him to do, if that makes sense. So, um, we've got our two overseas players. We've got Matt Kelly, who's an Australian, Will Young, I believe that's Will Young, the New Zealander, yes it is. Um, I, I'm just looking to see who I want to bring in. I don't really want to play Russell, I'd rather play Kerrigan, so we'll bring him in. And Gareth Berg can play in place of Taylor. Um, and then we'll bring, hmm, Cobb, uh, I kind of want to bring in another wiki keeper. I'll bring Goldstone over Cobb and then I'll give the captain C to Proctor. That's what I'll do. Um, so this will be the squad going forward uh, for the first match. Um, as I did say before, Marlow has a first class preference of batting at five. So we are going to bat him at five. I don't, don't really know how much of an impact this does make. Um, but just because he's got a preference, I am going to play him there. Everybody else, I'm going to play in the second 11 so they can develop form. Um, there we go. Oh, almost done. Let's just skip a few players there. There we go. Okay, so now that we've done that, Marlow will need to look at what, what kind of form he's in. Um, he's in decent form. He's got over 100 in his last 12 innings, so that's not too bad, but no other scores over 50. So... This is going to be interesting. I think I think we need to develop his batting form, um, but there's a few ways we can do that. We can either just send him to extra batting practice, which I prefer for the older players, so guys who are over the age of 27, because they're basically fully developed by that time. So if Will Young, not Will Young, Marlo, Billy Marlo, I was looking at Will Young, if Billy Marlow was 27 years old and he's averaging 45 with the bat and he's in three-star form, I would send him to extra batting practice to get that form up. That might put him at three and a half stars form instead of three. It just gives you a better chance of scoring more runs. But because Billy's a younger player, um, we've got a few options here. Um, we're just going to focus, because he's a batsman, on the batting technique and batting specialism. And for the bowlers, for the younger bowlers, I'll do a few examples for that later. Um, but for batting technique, our options are we can send it to general technique, which will just increase his general game um, instead of focusing on one particular area. And then offside shots, leg side shots, spin bowling, fast bowling, front foot technique, and back foot technique. Obviously, depending on which one you pick, it gets prioritized over the other techniques. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but for what we're going to do, I think we're going to send him to batting specialism. And I think... I can see in my team that we don't really have that many good openers. We've got three openers in total. Uh, we've got Vasconcellos who averages 36, which is about 
I'd say it's about average, I would say, um, for your team, for about um, the uh, county championship in England. I, I t like to have my openers averaging at least 40, but that's just my personal preference. Um, obviously, getting, getting everybody to average 50 is unrealistic, so I lower that expectation down to about 40. And then Curran and Gay average, you know, sub 30. So I think if we can transition Billy Marlowe into a solid opening batsman, and he opens already at T20 level, so that means that should sort of progress his development a little bit quicker. I, I have found that, that when I have tested this kind of thing out, that does happen a bit quicker. So we're actually going to send him to first class opener, as well as physio, because he's going to be playing a lot of matches. So um, that's basically my explanation for that. Um, and now I'm going to go through each of the remaining players in the squad. We're going to sort this by personal, so we can just see how old the players are um, and sort of assess them case by case. We've got five coaching se sessions left. Um, so we're going to start at the top with Ben Curran. Now, he, as I said, he averages about 30. I think I'm just going to send him to batting general technique, just to up his general technique. Um, we'll have a look at his personal um, batting preferences. So he's a pace bowling preference, front foot and leg side. He's already got um, opening attributes uh, for first class one day and 20 over. And I won't play much around with his aggression at the moment. So we'll just send him to general technique. Gay... He's a bit defensive. I prefer my opening batsman to be quite aggressive. Um, so I'm actually going to send him to um, upping his aggression. Uh, that'll be in batting specialism, and that'll just put up his aggression. And next cab off the ranks will be Gouldstone. Now, Gouldstone and Vasconcellos. I'm actually just going to send them to fielding, catching, and keeping. Because if you've been watching my Cricket Captain series, um, my completion of series, you will know that I hate wicket keepers dropping catches. So, whenever I get the chance, I send my wicket keepers to catching practice. That's all I do. Um, now, is it John, Jimmy, James, James Sales, um, son of David Sales, who used to play for Northamptonshire, I believe. Um, he looks to be quite good with the bat. Um, we'll look at his uh, second 11 stats. Averages 35 with the bat, 44 with the ball. So he's probably going to be a bit more of a batting all-rounder. So we'll probably want to develop him, um, as I said, into a bit more of a batting all-rounder. Now, he is very defensive. Um, so we might... We'll just work on his general technique for now, and maybe in a, a season or two time we can change that aggression level to get it at around average. Um, who's next? Um, Heldreich, I believe that's how you say his name. He's only played a handful of games for uh, Northamptonshire so far. Average is 31 with the ball um, all round in uh, the second 11 stuff, which isn't terrible, but it's not like fantastic. So we might just send him to bowling general technique. Um, I will actually, before I do this, we'll cover all of the um, bowling techniques. So general technique, defensive bowling, aggressive bowling, defensive one day bowling and aggressive one day bowling. The one that I mainly use is general technique. I, unless I've got players that exclusively play um, one day bowling or one day cricket. So for example, um, Moeen Ali, he's retired from first class and test cricket. So, and if I want to work on his bowling, I know he's a bit older, but let's just, you know, work with the analogy. Um, I would send him to um, one day bowling, aggressive one day bowling. Defensive one day bowling, I don't really use. It depends on what fielding settings you use. Actually, I'd probably lean towards using defensive, mainly because I use a bit more of defensive fields in one day bowling. So I'd actually send him to defensive one day bowling for, for Moeen Ali. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to send um, Heldrake to General Technique. Uh, and the two Russell guys, they're both named Alex Russell, so I'm not sure if Cricket Captain made a mistake and added two Alex Russells, or there is just two Alex Russells, the bowl leg spinner, both age 19. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to send both of them to um, aggressive bowling, actually. Um, I have no more coaching sessions, so scrap that. And for physio, I've got one more physio session. I'm going to give that to Vasconcellos because he's at best opening batter. If we lose him, we're going to be in a bit of strife. Um, now, 
Back to the team selection. I did say that we are sending Marlo to um, opening training. Now, another player that I can talk about actually is a player in my um, completionist series on my channel. Um, I might put a link to that in the description, um, but it's pretty easy to find on my channel. If you just go to my playlist, you'll find it. Is um, Sharif Aslam. He's playing in my um, Central Punjab series. Now, he has been opening for us on occasions, but he's not actually listed as an opening player. Um, but I have sent him to opening training. So, but he normally bats at seven for us. But so what, I'm, what I've done there is I'm still batting him in the middle order until he develops into an opener. And then when he's full, once he fully develops, I'll then put him in as an opening batsman. So I'm gonna do the same thing with Billy Marlowe here today. Um, so I'm gonna leave him at five um, for the first couple of games of the season. And then once um, he develops into an opening batsman, it really depends on how long it takes. Sometimes it takes six weeks. Sometimes it can take up to six months. So it just depends on how quickly um, the player adapts to the training. Um, it's a little bit of hit and miss, unfortunately. It's, there's no real clear time frames on how it does happen. You just get a notification one week saying that um, they've achieved um, the training that you've required them to do. Um, so, but I think that's going to do it for today. It's a little bit of a shorter episode. There's not really much to cover in training. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, put a question down in the comment section, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. If you want to join my discord server, I'll put a link to that in the description and I'll catch up with you next time for some more Cricket Captain Academy. See you guys then.